All right, coming to you with a uh, 2018 Ford Escape with a 1.5 liter uh, that has the uh, coolant consumption issue. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and replace the block. It's a well-known issue with the uh, mismanufactured block. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of catalog this. Uh, sort of along the way, not super detailed, a little bit over, a little bit of a high level overview, and uh, I'll probably point out some of the more uh, subtle things that some of the other videos I found on YouTube don't point out, uh, such as like how certain things come apart or how you get certain things out of the way. Um, you'll find during the video I may say something and then I'll probably figure it out along the way that it wasn't right or I found a different way to do it. So, uh, just kind of showing how the adventure goes. Uh, as a mechanic, you don't always know the right way to do something the first time. And this is definitely the first time I've taken this apart. Um, so you'll kind of see that along the way. I will say out uh, of this whole project so far, this part right here is probably the most tedious part that I wasn't trying to uh, break any of the plastic pieces and um, you can't exactly see what you're trying to take apart or how it's attached. Um, I had to break in one little plastic fastener in the middle. Um, so definitely take your time on this part. This is also about the same time I decided to start doing YouTube. Um, so when I was taking video, I didn't necessarily worry about landscape versus portrait or anything like that. So you'll notice that uh, some of this isn't formatted exactly the same. It's all part of the process getting started. We have our battery box, which you have to unbolt the three bolts in the battery box. This unclips off of this guy. You just lift and come back, that'll come off. We'll get the battery box out here in a second. Here's the lower of the uh, air cleaner box. Uh, I disconnected the, um, disconnected the uh, master cylinder reservoir, which I got sitting right there. Okay, so far where we're at, took the battery box out completely. There's a screw you have to take out for here. A little uh, plastic pop rivet thing comes out there. It kind of auto centers itself. Uh, that's all gonna come out with the vehicle. This next part I kind of glaze over it because I was under the impression the relay center had to come out, um, which it does not. Uh, that whole side stays in and the wiring is kind of confusing if you don't know how it's in there as far as what has to get unplugged and what goes with the vehicle and what doesn't, what has to get unclipped. And I kind of figured that out along the way. Yeah, and then in that video, he had this whole thing off. This stays with the vehicle. Okay. All right, slide update. So I had to remove the... engine harness from this uh, relay center type deal. Just unplug it from there. This is gonna go with go with the engine and everything. This is your vacuum assist. Unhooks from there, routes up underneath there, comes across the engine and in there and I broke the connector slightly. So I might have to get another one. We got everybody's bomb. She's gonna blow up. Here's an update where we're at. I have most of the transmission stuff um, undone. The battery center, all this stuff out of here. All the major, you know, coolant hoses, all that disconnected on top. The only thing I'm struggling to get in the worst way, and I've got the tool to do it, is this lower radiator hose 
getting the little spring clip undone. I can't get a good enough bite on it. I'm gonna try to get that done today. Um, and then I think that's about it. I got the AC lines undone, trans or the cooler lines back here on the quick connect undone. Um, and then I uh, got the suspension ready to knock that out. I have to cut my end links off. They, they spun up here. I can't get that loose. Uh, and then take this ball joint out. When I get the ball joint off, end link cut off, I have to unbolt here and here. I can drop, drop the, uh, the subframe out. This is one of the most irritating part of projects in general is you can't get certain bolts and shit off. Loud noises. Like and subscribe to this video. And just like that. We have disconnected exhaust. So we'll probably wire that up so it's not hanging so much from the end hanger. Okay, and getting this out, there's a cross member here that it slips into this joint. So you can't you can't slide the whole carriage forward or backward because you'll see here. The carriage itself is, let's see if you can see what I'm looking at here. Let me back out some. Okay, so this whole uh, cradle is supported right here. So instead of taking all these brackets off in order to be, uh, to be able to drop it straight down, I was thinking, well, how in the world would you get this front support out? Because this piece has to slide backwards to come out. Well, this piece is unboltable, and it's not super obvious at first because you're looking at it from the back side, and you can't slide it side to side just by taking that vertical bolt out that you see because you can't go side to side because it's captured that hole. So anyways, two 10 millimeter bolts there, two up in there, you can drop this down, and slide this piece out, and now that cross member piece is completely out. All right, so got the we got this bracket. Let's see if we get light where you can see it. All right, so we got that off, and there's two bolts right above here. Let me show you that. Where those were at? Yeah, right there, right there. And now this piece can come off. Well, the other one just flew out of there. What a nice one. I guess it's a little a little caught on some stuff, but it gets you enough room now that you can drop it down. Yeah, poop. Yeah, even that doesn't really help. It's a con on. Looks like maybe like the fuel lines and stuff that's up underneath there. This bracket's a little more involved than the other one. <sighs> yeah. Oh well, it's enough that we could probably make it work. And if it isn't, we'll have to drop out this uh, this cross member piece. It goes all the way across, and that's. That's really not that big a deal. It's just I didn't want to have to take all that plastic off in order to do it because you have to get um, up into this area. So.
Okay, more progress. All right, as you can see, great big hole in the engine bay because we got this guy out of here. Um, so the way that I did it is um, there's this cross bracket underneath here. This piece that goes across there, that has to drop down in order for this um, this piece right here to come out. And that's for the, the cradle support or um, the bottom part of the, the cradle sandwich piece right here. Uh, so you have to drop the cross brace out, drop this piece out, and then unbolt up in here. Uh, the Taking all the coolant lines off this thing is a nightmare. There's, this It's absolutely horrible. Um, and then once I got to uh, this point, I went ahead and took the shock out and wired the brake and everything up out of the way because, as you can see, I have the back wheels on the ground and all I did was jack this thing up high enough to slide the entire engine uh, cradle and all on a couple little uh, dolly pieces and then the transmission jack and it comes out sideways out of that hole just fine. Oh, and one part they for one part they forgot to mention is there is a plug way up in here. So, as you can see, way up in here. Let's see if we can turn that light on. Yeah, way up there. That thing is so hard to get off. Um, and this container box for the computer wouldn't be so bad if they didn't have that hidden fastener up in there. This would come out a lot easier. It'd be pretty easy to uh, take that box out and get that connector. So next up, start tearing down this engine.